Hey guys, Vikas over here and you are watching We Are Genius. Guys, today I am again with a new video around SP32 and energy monitoring. In this video, we will make an energy meter using PJDM040 module and SP32 and we will be connecting the same to OpenHAF. If you are not aware of OpenHAF, it is an open source home automation tool that you can use to automate your house. You can find videos around it down below in the description. The data from the energy monitoring device which over here includes the PZDM module and ESP32 will be published to OpenHAF using MQTT. For that, we need to have an MQTT broker and over here I am using Mosquito MQTT broker. This project can help you keeping track of your energy consumption and also can help you do some analytics or tasks based on rules such as consumption limit and all in open app. In my previous video, I made a LoRa enabled energy meter around ESP32 and PJDM module. So over here, I am going to use the same hardware setup. So if you have not seen that video, you can certainly check that out for which I have provided the link down below in the description. And also same is available in the i button. So being said that, let's get started guys. So guys, the way it is going to work is the PJDM module is connected to a SP32 module over here. The SP32 module pulls data out of PJDM module periodically and then it publishes the data to a particular empty topic as JSON document. The same topic is subscribed by OpenHAB also. So as soon as the SP32 module publishes the data, same is received by OpenHAB. Then it passes the JSON document and stores data to local items. And we can finally create a uh, sitemap in OpenHAP that will display the face data. So you can see over here the sitemap will look something like. So now let's get into the connection diagram and we'll quickly go through it and after that we'll check out the code. So guys, let's check out the circuit connection and all. And this is a schematic that I also showed in my last video and otherwise both are actually same. So over here, nothing fancy. I've connected the PJDM module to SP32 module and in between them in the TX pin that comes from PJDM module which goes to RX pin of PS32, I've just used one logic level shifter because PJDM module works in 5V whereas SP32 module supports 3.3V logic. So apart from that, nothing special. The TX pin of ESP32 module is connected to RX pin of PJD module directly. So over here, as logic level shifter, I have used 27000FET. So you can check out the circuit in detail in my last video. So now let's get into the Arduino ID and we'll see how the code works. So guys, uh, this is the code that I'm going to use in this project. And over here, I have used several libraries such as U8 Cross 8, Software Serial, Pubsub Client and AutoConnect. So U8 Cross 8 is used to interact with the onboard OLED module, whereas Software Serial is used to communicate with the PJM module by using Software Serial. After that, Pubsub Client is used to publish the data using MQTT. Then AutoConnect is used to configure the module in runtime. So let's just quickly go through the code and we'll see how it works. So over here, I have just some definitions and all. Then I have created the RxTX pin variables over here. So I have used pin number 13 and 21, but you can use any one, any GPIO, but just make sure it is not being used by onboard component. So I have just hard coded it. You can change it as per your requirement. Then I've just created the software serial object for the PJDM module then some variables, then then comes the commands that is being used with the PZDM module. So over here, these commands holds true as long as the module's address is 192.168.1.1. So if you have changed the default address of the module, these commands are not going to work. You just need to calculate the checksum. So I have just taken these commands out of the data sheet of the PZDM module. Then we have these variables for display update intervals and all. Then I have this auto connect object, then OFA of client and all, pops up client, all those definitions. Then I've used this static JSON document and I'm using Arduino JSON library for this. And this actually helps us holding the ng data, which we will be publishing to the MQTT topic as a JSON document. Then after this, some MQTT configuration, then this MQTT connect, which helps us connecting to the MQTT broker. Then MQTT publish, which uh, as the name suggests, 
publish the data. Then after that, this we have these functions like save params, load params, handle root, and load ox. So these are as per the Auto Connect library, and this helps us configure in the module. So over here, as I said earlier, I'm using Auto Connect library to configure the module in runtime. And how it works is whenever your module boots up, it checks for saved credentials for Wi-Fi, if any. Then if there are any credentials saved, then it will try to connect to the access point. So if it is not able to connect to the access point or there are no any saved credentials, then it converts the module into access point mode and it creates a local Wi-Fi access point. Then you can connect to the access point and you can configure the module. Along with that, AutoConnect also lets you create custom web pages which I have over here used to configure the MQTT configurations and all. So you can pretty much go through AutoConnect library and the documentation is pretty clear. Then this load MQTT settings and all which I have added to configure the module or to save the MQTT credentials and all. Then in setup, what we are doing is we are creating the serial objects. We are also initializing the software serial object over here with the RSTX pins and the baud rate. So baud rate is by default 9600 as long as you have not changed it for the PJDM module. Then we are initializing SPIPS uh, file system. Again, we are using SPIPS as per AutoConnect library over here because to create custom pages, we need to upload some JSON documents or need to create some JSON files in the ESP32 or ESP8266 module. Then as per AutoConnect, we have some, some load ox function to load the ox MQTT settings file and ox MQTT save file. So I have defined those on top. So these files, uh, you can see over here. Yeah, uh, this uh, like MQTT safe, MQTT clear, MQTT settings and param.json file. Then after that, we have loop and in loop, we are just checking the con uh, interval that the model is configured to publish data. So if the last publish time is, uh, you know, higher than the publish interval it is configured with, it will just try to publish the data. And for that, it is calling update meter data function, which basically fetches the meter data from the PJDM module and assign those to some variables. And as well as we are creating the JSON document over here. So I have just added some JSON keys and value pair over here. And after that, we don't have anything like we have phase data, which basically is, uh, you know, interacting with the module. It uh, basically sends out the command like which are we have defined over here and it waits for response so there is a timeout to this if it is not getting response uh, after a certain time limit and all it will exit so yep that's pretty much all about the code guys uh, that's how it works you can get in detail into the code and also i have linked the libraries that i have used in my github repository so along with this code uh, we need to also flash some files or copy files to the ESP32 module over here. So I'll just show you that. Yeah, we have something like MQTT save interjection, MQTT settings and param. So MQTT settings, what it does is basically these are two custom pages which uh, are edge for the AutoConnect library and param does JSON holds our MQTT configuration data and all. So we need to flash this code as well as we need to upload these files to ESP32 module. So, so now let's first uh, flash the code over here. So I'll just do hit upload button. And to upload these files, we need to have uh, this particular tool over here, ESP32 sketch data upload. Uh, so by default, it will not be available with Arduino IDE and you need to download the jar file for this and you need to put that into the tools folder in your Arduino directory and all. So I'll just put the link down below in the description to this particular tool or this is particularly a jar file and all. So let's just wait till it uh, flash the sketch to the module.
Uh, so our code is uploaded and if you want to know the location of the jar file that we need to add for this ASP32 sketch data upload tool. So you can get into uh, like you know your Arduino installation then tools and uh, you need to uh, put this file ASP32FS.jar inside tools esp 32 f Now uh, we'll just check out the files that we are going to upload and it has to be inside the sketch folder and into a data folder. So you can see over here I have kept my files inside data folder in my sketch folder. Now get into the Arduino IDE over here select esp 32 sketch data upload and this should upload the files that we have kept inside data folder to the esp 32 module. So let's just wait till it gets uploaded. So you can see after everything gets uploaded, you will see something like spips image uploaded. So now guys, uh, we are done with code and we have also uploaded the supporting files and all that we need in ESP32. So now let's just quickly boot it up and we'll start configuring it. So over here, I'm going to use my cell phone to interact with the module during fast boot and I'll be adding up my Wi-Fi credentials into it so that it can connect to my Wi-Fi network. After that, I'll just get into the PC and we'll start configuring the MQTT part of it. So guys, the module is now connected to the Wi-Fi network and we need to configure it so that it can publish to the desired MQTT topic. To do so, we need the IP address of the module which can be obtained from the connected OLED display or it can be fetched from the serial console. Or in worst case scenario, you can use your router or any IP scanner to find out the IP address of the module. So for me, the IP address is uh, something like this. So over here, if I go into this icon again, I'll find something like configure new access point, open SSIDs, disconnect reset and MQT settings and home. So home will basically take to the landing page and all and configure new AP will let you configure uh, some other Wi-Fi network if you want to connect to and you can choose from the available Wi-Fi networks. Again over here we chose DSCP while connecting uh, like initially configuring the module but you can choose static IP addresses also. So over here we will get into MQTT settings and we need to configure the MQTT broker URL, the port, the username and the password used by it or password the broker is configured with. So and again along with that we need to configure the MQTT topic where the module will be publishing the energy data and the update interval that we want to. So this will basically control the you know how, how often the module will publish data to this particular topic. So make sure all those values are correct and actually I have already entered those. So for me it is okay. So I'll go and save and restart. Now I need some sort of MQTT client so that will make sure that module is actually publishing the energy data to this particular topic. So let's copy this topic. And over here I'm going to use MQTT spy. So which you can see over here, you can also use MQTT lens or any sort of MQTT client software that you are familiar with. And you can see over here, I've configured a topic home energy meter data. And this is some, what I configured in the module itself. So if you go over here, you can see the module is already publishing the data as a JSON object. So it has power, voltage, amps and energy as configured in the Arduino code. So basically we are getting the data over here. Now we'll head over to open half and create the required things and channels so that we can read out this data. And also we'll be subscribing to particular topic as well will be connecting to this particular MQTT broker that is uh, for me this particular host IP. So let's quickly get into OpenHAF and configure. So guys this is my OpenHAF installation. So over here I will get into paper UI and we will install the required add-ons. So get into add-ons. First of all we will be installing the MQTT binding for OpenHAF. 
so i'll be installing the mkdt binding version 2 so if you have enabled legacy add-on services and all you'll also uh, you know find mkdt binding version 1 so make sure you install or the version 2 of it along with that i'll also install json path transformations add-on so i'll just go over here this is the json path transformation So this will enable us to pass the JSON string that we are getting from the module. So uh, then we'll be you know able to pass this individual parameters out of it. So yeah, we have installed that both the add-ons that is required. Now get into inbox, click on plus, MQTT binding, manually add thing. First thing we'll be doing is connecting to the MQTT broker. So for that will create a mkdt broker thing and all it requires the ip address of the broker then we need the username and password we don't need to configure anything else just click on again if you are using tls and ssl that if it is that is available in your broker and all you need to configure accordingly now after this we need to create a thing for our energy meter so to do that again i'll get into this create a generic mkdt thing then select the bridge then we don't need to configure anything just click on plus so for this i'll just keep a name energy meter or pzdm energy meter yep the thing is created and is online now we need to create the channels so we'll be creating four channels like over here for power voltage current and energy so i'll just copy this topic and i'll create a channel of type number so again i had uh, you know as far as all are particularly numbers so we'll create all the channels as number but if you are getting something else, you need to change accordingly. So first is energy. Level is also going to be energy. Then the MKT state topic where wherein this particular thing will subscribe to this particular topic. Then we also need to define the transformers transform values actually. So for that, I'll just JSON path which is our transformation service that we are using then dollar is the json document and power is the key sorry not power over here it is let's check that one yeah energy i don't need to configure anything else so yep save now you can see over here we have got this then you can create another for power So top is is going to be basically same and that similarly we need to define the transformations so again it is going to be json path Now, as channels are created, we need to add items for this. So, yep. So, create a new item. Uh, let it be like this. So, level is energy, category, nothing, type number. So we can define this if it is available. Energy. 
we don't need to defend group for time being you can anyway include that if you want similarly for power i'll create a new item let it be like this power and all dimension let's see if we get power yep Now I finally will create a sitemap for this and to do this we just need to get into the open app installation into the uh, you know open app to folder and all then inside that we need to create a sitemap so I'll over here create one meta dot sitemap and i'll just copy this one yep over here we need to define or assign the items that we created earlier so for current this is going to be this so let's say third one then energy enter get into sitemaps or oh, sorry basic ui and meter and you can see all those values appearing over here so basically yep you can compare over here the voltage power energy and current so as we are getting the values over here we can also define the units for them which can be done over here in label we can do something like you know sorry personal is point to f so that will limit decimal points to two and all so basically two digits will be available after the decimal point similarly we can do some same thing for energy what tower so guys let's see if we have got units and all along with the parameters and you can see over here the units have also appeared over here along with the parameters along with those you can also configure icons for individual parameter and also we can use something like persistence provider to store this value over time for that you can use influx db or any other such you know database that is being supported by OpenHive. Along with that, also you can use Oplo Grafana to create nice charts along these parameters and all. So I'm not going to cover those in this video. We can certainly check that out in any upcoming. So that's pretty much all about it, guys. You can also do same without going through the paper way method by using text files so you can certainly create items and all using their respective files in open have and i have detailed the detail steps to do so in my github repository you can pretty much go through that and you'll be able to create the same thing by using text files and all without going through the paper ui method so that's pretty much all about it guys i hope you have enjoyed it if so hit the thumbs up button and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet consider subscribing it for videos like this so see you next time with our next video till then goodbye